Hi everybody and welcome back to video number 10 in chapter 20. And when we left off, we were looking at applying the classification tests um, for the uh, uh, airplane that was leased to city capital. The lease back of the airplane is classified as an operating lease because none of the sales type lease criteria are met as shown below. Number one, uh, transfer of ownership. Transfer of ownership does not occur. The asset reverts to city capital at the end of the lease. Number two, the purchase option test. There is no purchase option in this agreement and this lease. Number three, the lease term test. The lease term is 70%, seven years divided by 10 years of the remaining useful life, which is less than the threshold of 75%. Number four, the present value test. The present value of the lease payments is $25,414,625, which is 77% of $33 million of the fair value of the aircraft or less than 90% threshold. Therefore, the lease does not meet the present value test. And number five, the alternative use test. As indicated, the equipment is not of a specialized nature and is expected to have use to city capital when returned at the end of the lease. And here's the calculation of the present value of those lease payments over seven years at 8%. Okay, so this arrangement is, counted for, is accounted for as a sale because the lease back does not transfer control of the asset back to American Airlines. Only the right of use for seven years is guaranteed through the lease. All right, Schedule A, partial lease amortization schedule here for American Airlines here and for City Capital, the lessor here. So for American Airlines, they'll initially uh, reflect the fact they've received the $33 million in cash. They'll reflect the $3 million gain and take the $30 million asset off the books. They will create a right of use asset for $25,414,625, the present value of the lease, and credit lease liability. So the first lease payment, they're going to reflect um, $4,881,448 of lease expense, and then they're going to have um, a lease liability of $2,848,278. The credits will be to the right of use asset under Schedule B and to cash a credit of this of $4,881,448. Now, there'll be no depreciation expense recorded by American Airlines, but for city capital, they're going to reflect the fact they now have an aircraft worth a fair value of $33 million and they paid $33 million cash for it. Now, they will record the fact that they are receiving cash for the $4,881,448 and they will reflect that as lease revenue for that same amount. They will re reflect depreciation expense, and that'll be simply straight line uh, $33 million here divided by 10 years, or $3,300,000 depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation for the same amount. Now, um, so the second payment is going to be um, slightly different for American Airlines. Uh, the lease expense will be the same, but the lease liability will increase slightly to 3,076,140. And 
and the right of use asset as well will increase. Cash will remain the same. And then um, city capital will reflect the same um, lease revenue as it did here and the same depreciation expense that it did here. No entry will re be required for depreciation for American Airlines. Pretty straightforward there. Okay, and here's those calculations that we just went through. Here's um, uh, the partial lease here for um, um, the sale lease back for the less E and the less or Schedule A and B. And you can see how that was calculated. And you can tr trace those numbers back to these calculations here for American and City Capital. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at describing the lessor's accounting for a direct financing lease. Now in this case, lessors use a third lease classification, a direct financing lease, in one special situation. And that situation occurs when the lessor relinquishes the control of the asset to the lessee, but there is also but, but there is also involvement of a third party. So does the lease effectively transfer control of the underlying asset to the lessee? If it does, then it's a sales type lease lease. If it doesn't, does the lat lease effectively transfer control of the underlying asset to the lessee and other parties. If it does, then you have this direct financing lease. If it does not, which is the usual case, it's an operating lease. All right, so if we take a look at a direct financing uh, lease accounting, the basic difference between a direct financing lease and a sales type lease relates to the profit on the sale. In a sales type lease, the profit is recognized immediately. In a direct financing lease, the profit is deferred and recognized over the life of the lease. All right, let's take a look at the Ormond Company. They're the lessor, and they enter into a lease agreement with Amazon.com for the use of one of Ormond's standard motorized warehouse package pickers. One, the lease commencement date is January 1, 2025, with a term of three years. The lease agreement is non-cancellable, requiring equal rental payments at the end of each year, an ordinary annuity. And number two, the picker has a fair value at commencement of the lease of $30,000 and a carrying value of $28,000 with an estimated residual value of $6,000 at the end of the lease. The picker has an estimated economic life of five years. Amazon provides a guarantee that the residual value of the picker will be at least $6,000 at the end of the lease. And lastly, the lease contains no renewal options, and the picker reverts to Armand at the termination of the lease. All right, so we're going to assume that Armand Company, the lessor, enters into a lease agreement with Amazon for use of one of Armand's standard motorized warehouse package pickers. Armand sets the annual rental rate to return a rate of 6% per year, that's the implicit rate, on its investment as shown. Here's the fair value of the leased equipment. Here's the present value of the $6,000 residual value here. That's three years at 6% here. And the amount to be recovered by the lessor through lease, lease payments, therefore, is going to be $24,962.28. And if I divide that amount by the uh, present value factor here, we get 
$9,338.64. And that's the uh, three-year lease payments to earn a 6% return. Okay, let's take a look at the tests for sales type lease. In this case, we're going to evaluate the classification tests based on these facts. And that indicates that the lease is classified as a sales type lease for Armand. One transfer of ownership tests does not occur. The asset reverts to Armand at the end of the lease. Number two, there's no purchase option. Number three, the lease term is 60%. That's three years divided by five years. So that which is less than the major part of the asset, which is 75%. And number four, the present value of the lease payments is $30,000, which is 100%, which is greater than 90% of the fair value. Therefore, the lease does meet the present value test. And five, the alternative use test, as indicated, the equipment is not of a specialized nature and is expected to have use to Armand when returned at the end of the lease. So the present value of the rental payments plus the residual value guarantee discounted at 6% takes us to $30,000 which is shown here and here. Okay. So our journal entries are going to be, uh, for the sales type lease, Armand is going to make this journal entry at the beginning of the lease. Lease receivable will be $30,000. Cost of goods sold will be $28,000. Mm -hmm. And sales revenue will be 30,000 and inventory 28,000 credits. Okay. Now, um, Armand therefore is going to report gross profit pretty obviously here for $2,000. On the other hand, if the residual value is guaranteed by an unrelated third party, the lessor classifies the lease as a direct financing lease. Okay, the journal entry to record the direct financing lease is a little bit different. Armand uses the direct financing method because, as discussed earlier, the lessor still maintains some control of the asset. Armand recognizes a deferred gross profit of $2,000, which is the difference between the fair value of the property, $30,000, and the carry-in amount of the asset, $28,000. On January 1, 2025, Armand is going to make the following journal entry to record this direct financing lease. We'll have lease receivable of $30,000 and a credit of for deferred gross profit of $2,000 and a credit inventory to reduce inventory of $28,000. Okay, um, this sales type lease amortization is illustrated as follows. And in a normal sale, Armand would receive lease payments over the life of the lease, which on a present value basis equals the lease receivable of $30,000 a 6% rate of return. And here is the sales type lease amortization based on an ordinary annuity basis. So you can see this is done in a, uh, we've gone through these calculations many times, so I won't go through it in depth again here, but you can see the calculations as shown here. Okay, that looks like a good place to stop this lease to stop this uh, lease and to stop this video. And when we return, we'll take a look at how we do direct financing lease amortization. Until that time, bye for now.